Gunners have won 11 out of the last 13 games. All right, so it's all down to Salt Bay, is it? Uh, but they'll be wary of a certain returning strikers. Harry Kane is primed to add his tally of 14 goals against the Arsenal. John is now European football expert Kevin Hatchard. Kev, morning. Morning, guys. How are we? Uh, morning, very Kev. well, Kev. I heard you earlier on talking about who's favourites tonight, and you'd be mad to think that it, it could not be the Arsenal. The way Arsenal are playing, the way are, the type of form that Bayern are not in, or they're really struggling then, this looks on paper as if it should be a, a convincing home win. Should be. Well, I certainly think over the two legs, Arsenal are favourites because they're the team that's got the structure. They're the team that's got the form. And without the ball, they've been excellent this season. Uh, certainly since Dubai, Salt Bay or non-Salt Bay. We, we don't know if that's been the uh, critical factor, of course. But look, I, I think they're everything Bayern aren't at the moment. However, Bayern do have a world-class attack. You know, any team that's got Harry Kane leading it, any team that's got Jamal Musiala, any team that's got the kind of experience of this competition that they have is going to be dangerous. And you saw the way that Arsenal played against Porto over the two legs. And again, that was a Porto team that has lots of experience in this competition. And Arsenal looked really jittery, especially in Portugal in the first leg. And yes, they found a way to come through, but they needed penalties to do it. So sometimes this competition can do weird things to players. If you're looking at the form, there's no doubt Arsenal are favourites, but Bayern are very, very dangerous if you are sloppy and let them in. Yeah. Kev, where, wherever you look in the Arsenal team, there's, I was just saying a little while ago about lovely combinations. There's players that seem to dovetail, they work together and it, and it looks looks so good. Um, in the Bayern team, I'm intrigued to know, what, how's Eric Dyer doing in there alongside De Ligt? How's that looking? Yeah, he's done okay. Um, he's had a run of games in the team. I, I think Thomas Tuchel made some interesting choices when it came to his centre-backs because Dio Pamecano had this really weird run where he got sent off in back-to-back -back games and he gave away a penalty in back-to-back -back games. And so his confidence kind of took a real hit because of that. He made this decision about Min Jae Kim, who I thought had been very good, actually, in the first half of the season. But he came back from the Asian Cup with South Korea and Tuchel talked about the fact that he felt he'd been overplayed. He felt he was too tired. And so Kim and Upamecano played at the weekend together against Heidenheim and they were awful. They were mm. really bad. They were 2-0 up at half time and lost 3-2. Yeah. And so De Ligt and Dyer recently have been his first choice pairing. So... He's done fine, Eric Dyer, but they, Bayern in general, really struggled in the Classica against Pace. Mm. Um, if you look a couple of weeks ago uh, and got hit on the counter. I think the biggest worry for Bayern and has been all season against big teams is how they look in transition when they lose the ball and yeah. teams trying to break on them. Massive spaces there, far too vulnerable. Um, uh, they they ask the centre-backs to cover a hell of a lot of ground. And Eric Dyer is a, is a good, solid player, good character, but he's not mega quick. We know that. And we don't so know who Arsenal different. are going to play through the middle. Is it going to be Jesus? Is it going to be Havertz? Or are they going to play with a false nine? You know, we don't know. Yeah, and then you the, the key for them might be the pace out wide as well. I mean, if you look at the kind of damage that maybe Saka could do, um, you know, on the counter, I think that's a real worry for Bayern. I think as well a factor is the fact that Bayern can't take any fans because yeah, of yeah. this um, this punishment they've been given for the pyro in Rome against Lazio. So that's an issue. Uh, there was a story in the German media in the build-up to the game that because of that and because of the UEFA sanction, um, Bayern don't have as many tickets as they'd usually have. So the players haven't been able to take, you know, family and wives with them and what have you. It's only a very tiny thing. But what it leads to is this overall feeling of just a bit of disgruntlement in the Bayern mm. camp and they're not as happy as they could be. They haven't got that swagger that we see so often with Bayern. Kev, I bet he cuts a, a fr frustrated figure too cool. I mean, uh, even at the best of times when things are going well, yeah. and I remember him at Chelsea, he's always bouncing up and down in the technical area of c kicking every ball, contesting every decision. How's his body language been lately? Same as it always is. Is it? Same again. You're absolutely right. From the get-go, he's on the touchline, screaming at his players, looking frustrated. Mm. You know, he's very, very happy to 
kind of openly say his players were bad. And sometimes he takes responsibility and that's fine, but he pulls no punches. And that's been the same everywhere he's been, whether it was Chelsea, whether it was Dortmund, uh, whether it was Mainz even before that. You know, he's a very emotional guy. And I think they've got this really weird situation where everybody knows he's going in the summer. And really, it's because there's there's no immediate replacement. There's no obvious way to put somebody else in there between now and the end of the season. So even though they lost really badly at the weekend and they're now 16 points behind Bayer Leverkusen in the title race, they they made it clear that after the final whistle, look, he's going to be on the bench for the Arsenal game because yeah. there is no other plan. Uh, Kev, let's see how it goes tonight. Thanks, Two Kev. cracking games. Really looking forward to it. Thank you. Uh, it's going to be very interesting. It really is. Right, Talk Sport, we bring you live commentary of both games. Eight o'clock, Arsenal Bayern, Champions League quarter. Talk Sport, presented by Adrian Durham. Commentary from Jim Proudfoot and our very own Andy Townsend. Talk Sport Breakfast, waking you up Monday to Friday morning from 6 a.m. on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.